The 2023 Asia Professional Baseball Championship was held a couple of weeks ago, bringing together the best players in MPB, KBO, CPBL, and the ABL, 24 years old or under, and also with three overage spots. This was only the second iteration of this particular tournament, with Japan winning the previous one back in 2017. Australia didn't participate back then, but this year, the field was expanded to four teams, so the stakes were even higher. Hideki Kuriyama stepped down after winning the World Baseball Classic, so this was Hirokazu Ibata's first competition at the helm for Samurai Japan. And before the tournament even started, it was pretty clear that he has a keen eye for identifying young talent with a stacked roster including superstars like Shugo Maki, Teruaki Sato, and Chusei Manami. Ibata was the under-12 Japanese national team manager before this, and he's concurrently taking care of the U-15 national team duties, so even though Kuriyama is an irreplaceable figure who was really the perfect man for the job, I do think Ibata is a pretty solid hiring. Former Softbank Hawks manager Kimiyasu Kudo probably would have made the most sense, but Ibata is expected to be the skipper through at least the 2026 WBC, so it's important that he has adequate time to gain everyone's trust. Japan played two exhibition games prior to the APBC going 1-1 one and, one and opened their tournament against Chinese Taipei, where they immediately showed some rust, failing to record a base runner through the first five innings against Gulen Ruiyang of the Uni Lions in the CPBL. But Japan finally got their first knock in the sixth with Yomiuri Giants rookie Makoto Kadawaki smacking a double, and then broke through in the seventh with Hanshin Tigers rookie Shota Marishita hitting his solo shot. It remained 1-0 going into the ninth, but Japan was able to add some crucial insurance runs from Hiroshima card backstop, Shogo Sakakura's RBI single, one of the overage players on this team, and Makoto Kadawaki's third hit of the night to make it 4-0. On the pitching side, Yuji Akahoshi of the Giants held his own, throwing four and two-thirds scoreless frames before a relay of Masaki Oyokawa, Haruka Nemoto, Takuma Kirishiki, and Kazuto Taguchi completed the shutout to get the Samurai off on the right foot. The next game came the following day against rivals Korea, who had won their opener against Australia in extras, and this proved to be another low-scoring affair. Lee Ui Lee of the Kia Tigers was pretty shaky out the gates, but Japan failed to score in the first inning, despite recording three hits and a walk, as Yuki Okabayashi was caught stealing on a controversial call, Teruaki Sato struck out with the bases loaded, and Chusei Manami flew out. Japan had another chance for a big rally in the third, as Shugo Maki, the only player on the roster who was also on the WBC team, came up with the bases full, but grounded into a double play. Now, it did score a run to put Japan in front, but Korea should be very happy to escape the early innings with limited damage. On the other side of things, Seibu Lion South Pachihiro Sumida got the start and he was absolutely rolling early on, perfect through the first three innings with four strikeouts and a very favorable pitch count. Chusei Manami came up in the fourth and dispatched a fastball 423 feet to dead center to make it 2 nothing. After a huge breakout season with 26 home runs, Manami is really starting to look like Samurai Japan's future right fielder at the 2026 WBC. Now, I was at this game and all I'll say is, I was wearing a Manami jersey, so did I manifest this home run? Let's just pretend I did. Japan couldn't push across any more runs after that, but Sumida just kept on cruising, finishing the night with 7 punchouts across 7 shutout innings on just 2 hits. Lotte Marines prospect Rikuto Yokoyama threw a scoreless, albeit shaky, 8th inning, and then overage closer Kazuto Taguchi came in for the 9th, allowing a solo homer to Weejip Kim of the Kiwum Heroes, but recording the save nonetheless to secure Japan a spot in the championship game. The third and final game of round robin play came against Australia, who had lost both of their games in extras to this point, and the Japanese offense finally woke up as they put up 10 runs in 8 innings, and Mercy ruled the Aussies, though 7 of those runs were actually unearned. 18-year-old Jake Bushel was the starter for Australia, so I can't really say that Japan was challenged very much, but still, 
after a couple of sluggish performances that resulted in games being a lot tighter than they probably should have, it was nice to see the bats come alive as Kyoto Fujiwara led the way with three hits, Yuki Okabayashi and Kaito Kozono each had two hits, and Chusei Manami had a big triple. On the mound, Rakuten Eagles lefty Takahisa Hayakawa was absolutely stellar, exiting after seven strikeouts and five perfect innings before handing the ball to Kojiro Yoshimura, Shinsuke Sato, and Tatsuya Shimizu. The combined perfect game bid came to an end in the seventh, but overall it was just total domination from the Japanese arms, and it seems Hayakawa will also be heading down to Perth to play winter ball this week, so I guess he's not done tormenting Australian hitters yet. So that takes us to the Asia Professional Baseball Championship game, a rematch between Japan and Korea as Korea took down Chinese Taipei the previous night. Seibu Lions overage player and long-haired prince Tatsuya Imai got the start for Japan, while Bingwak of the Dusan Bears took the hill for Korea. Imai was throwing heat early on, but his problem has always been command, and the Koreans started to pounce on the mistakes as they got out to a 2-0 lead in the third, following a walk, an error, and a double. They pulled the plug on Imai after just four innings, and in came Nippon Ham fighter Southpaw Haruka Nemoto. Though he barely touches 90 miles an hour, Nemoto has managed to post above average strikeout rates in MPB with an effective mix of fastballs and sliders low in the zone, and he was able to show that here on the biggest stage, throwing three shutout innings in relief and striking out four. Offensively, Japan had plenty of chances early but didn't break through until the fifth when Shugomaki made up for his earlier error with a solo bomb to cut the lead in half. At that point, Japan was able to seize the momentum and tied the game in the sixth with a Chusei Manami double, Makoto Kadawaki bunt, and Teruaki Sato sack fly. So it looked like Japan was on track to complete the comeback right then and there, but they weren't able to score again in regulation. As for Korea, Takuma Kirishiki and Kazuto Taguchi kept them scoreless, though Taguchi almost blew it with some hard hit balls. So that sent the game into extras, which includes the international tiebreaker rules, runners on first and second with nobody out to start the inning. High octane strikeout arm Tatsuya Shimizu was available for Japan, but they elected to go with a safer option in Yakult Swallows rookie Kojiro Yoshimura, probably hoping he could induce a double play ball, and he did just that to get Japan within an out of a scoreless 10th. But Korea was able to break through to take a 3-2 lead. So Japan had their backs against the wall, but with two runners on and the red-hot Shota Marishita coming up. But they decided to use catcher Yuto Koga to pinch bunt for him, which was a very odd choice. Credit to him though, he got it down. Then Korea intentionally walked Shugo Maki to get to Shogo Sakakura, who proceeded to hit a game-tying sack fly. Then they dished out another free pass, this time to Chusei Manami, before Makoto Kadawaki came through with a walk-off single to send everyone home. The walk-off gave Kadawaki tournament MVP honors, but so many of the games were really close, including obviously the final, which came down to the wire. So Japan should breathe easy for getting the job done, but definitely need to reflect on how to do better going forward. As far as key takeaways go, it's difficult to gain anything from just a small handful of games, but I really think this tournament shows you just how strong Japanese pitching is. They only gave up two earned runs across 36 innings, and that's without any of their top eligible arms like Roki Sasaki, Shoki Murakami, Shinpei Tayamashita, and Kaima Taira. This pitching staff was made up almost entirely of guys that are currently in the middle to back end of the rotation on their respective teams, and just guys that haven't quite reached their full potential yet. Chihiro Sumida and Takahisa Hayakawa in particular were truly overpowering, so hopefully it translates into an even better 2024 season and beyond. Hitting-wise, I was happy to see rookies Shota Marishita and Makoto Kadawaki succeeding, but one guy that disappointed me was Teruaki Sato. He had a monster September winning Player of the Month honors to end the regular season, but fell into a massive slump in the playoffs, and it carried over into a pretty underwhelming tournament here. I still think he has one of the highest ceilings of any player in Japan right now, but he needs to work on stabilizing the high peaks and low valleys so he can produce when it matters most. Also, I'm just going to say it right now, Chusei Manami is a superstar that thrives under pressure. 
he is well on his way to becoming one of the top MPB players of this generation. But that just about does it. I thought the 2023 APBC was fun and it's great to keep the international baseball spirit alive after the WBC, even if it's just a super short tournament like this. Next year, it's the 2024 Premier 12, so there's even more to be excited about. Make sure to follow me on X at Yaku Cosmo, support me on Patreon, and please like and subscribe for more MPB content in English.